gravity here before we start. Bin Laden gets to heaven for the wonderful job he did on 9-11. But somehow there's something strange about this place. It's sort of dark there and sinister looking. And suddenly from a background there appears George Washington and beats the hell out of him. Bin Laden is beginning to feel a little queasy and then there appears suddenly Thomas Jefferson who does a real number on him. Now Bin Laden is black and blue and writhing on the ground, but from the shadows there appears Robert E. Lee and finishes him off completely. The guy is really writhing on the ground. Bin Laden now says, Allah, what is this? I thought this was paradise, looks more like hell to me. And where are the 72 virgins you promised me? Allah grumbles, you idiot. I didn't say virgins, I said Virginians. <laughs> okay. You guys like comedy, eh? Is that okay? You know, there's something about these 72 virgins that I don't get. Do you ever really think about this? What is a guy supposed to do with 72 women who don't know what the hell they are doing? It's more like a punishment than a reward. I don't know why they put this war in the chair there. You know, it's, I don't think I'm going to get tired, but at least I hope not. All right, let's get serious here. I'll build this up to biodiesel, but for most of this presentation, you'll hear nothing about biodiesel. You'll hear the story of my life, pretty much and uh, how I got away from some very bad guys like Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, the Japanese uh, imperialists during the Second World War, and Mao Zedong of Chinese communists. I saw in my life absolute evil, but this will not be a horror story, but I also saw absolute good, and that's what I want to focus on. Because in my flight, in my odyssey to America, I met four good men who did not know each other, whom I didn't know either. They were perfect strangers to me. But these men risked their lives to save my little life, which is why I'm standing here before you today. And that's the story I want to tell you. Because many stories about the Holocaust have to do with its horrors. But people forget there were good men and good women who said no to absolute evil and thereby preserved our common humanity. That's what I want to talk about. I grew up in Vienna, Austria at a very bad time. 1938. And I actually had a good life then. A nice father, nice mom, nice school. And suddenly, in the middle of March of 1938, when I was a little kid, all this changed when Adolf Hitler came into town and took over my, him, my hometown. I actually saw the guy, would you believe this? Very close up, I'll come to that in a moment. When I tell this to my students, they think I'm some sort of a fossil, you know, but <laughs> really, I did see the guy. I saw him because I had a nanny, a kind of governess, who was also my piano teacher, was a gorgeous young woman, about 24, blue eyes, blonde eyed, gorgeous, and I had a mad crush on her. Her name was Liesel. And uh, my mom, um, at this point, was in Prague, Czechoslovakia. Uh, she was very unhappy because my father had just perished in Palestine in the fracas between the Arabs and the Jews who tried to get there. He had died. So I was alone now with my mom and with Liesel. But my mom was in Prague, Czechoslovakia. So I was in the care of Liesel. Now, Liesel was also my piano teacher. And we, we used to play Mozart four-handed. And I was sitting next to her. And once my elbow uh, slightly touched her breast, and a delicious, a delicious sensation coursed through my entire body. I didn't know what the hell that was, but it certainly felt good. So on this particular occasion, 
Liesel asked, said to me, Hansi, which was my childhood name, the Führer is coming into town. Would you like to go see the Führer? Well, I was going to say, anywhere Liesel goes, I went. So she wended her way through the swastika bedecked Vienna uh, to the Ringstrasse, the boulevard circling Vienna. And there were we screeching people uh, shouting in the distance, the Führer is coming, the Führer is coming. And then, sure enough, there was a crescendo, and uh, one saw a Mercedes uh, working its way through the teeming crowd. And for some inexplicable reason, uh, this car with Hitler in it, um, his arm, arm outstretched, came to a complete stop just before us, in front of Liesl and me, maybe 10 yards away. And suddenly, this curious thing happened. Liesl um, clutched her crucifix and whispered hoarsely, Holy Maria, Mother of God, this is the new Messiah. Now, this was a little spooky. You know, I didn't know what the heck she meant, but it sounded a little bit strange, to put it mildly. At any rate, when this was over, Lisa and I went back home, and um, she gave me a quick piano lesson, but she was preoccupied. And I said, will you, can you sing some Schubert Lieder for me, which she sometimes did. She said, no, she had an appointment. So I was disappointed and went to bed, but somehow couldn't sleep so well. In the middle of the night, some whispering uh, woke me up. My mom's room, my mom was in Prague. My mother's room was separated from mine by a thick velvet curtain. And I heard some whispering there. And uh, my curiosity was aroused. So I went to the curtain, peeked over it, and froze because I saw a ghastly sight. There was Liesel, the woman whom I adored, stark naked in my mom's bed. And there was a man, totally nude, and next to that man, there was a holstered revolver and SS uniform. And uh, she whispered to this man, I remember this so vividly, she said to him, give me a son for the Führer. Give me a son for the Führer. And this to me was horrible. So I snuck back into bed and uh, got ill, got sick for three days and three nights. My mom came back from Prague, didn't know what the hell was wrong with me. And then we decided to leave Vienna. That was the last of so Vienna. Liesel came to the train to kiss me goodbye, pecked me on the cheek. I felt nothing. And um, the train pulled out of the station, and I never saw Liesel again. That was the end of my first totally unconsummated love affair, ladies and gentlemen, when we left Vienna. Well, we left Vienna for Prague, Czechoslovakia. Hitler developed this curious passion to follow us around. He showed up in Prague the following year. And I had to look at this guy a second time. He now gave another speech in Prague. But the Czechs uh, were very unhappy to see Hitler march in. I remember this. There were elderly women prostrating themselves on the cobblestones of Prague, St. Wenceslau Square, trying to stop the advance of the German tanks. And, uh, the cops would tell them to get up and leave, which they finally did. And my mom would say to me, never forget this, never forget this. That was the second time I saw Adolf Hitler. 